Kenyato and here the story is making headlines. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Wednesday launched the last mile electricity connectivity project in Machakos. The project is geared towards increasing electricity access to Kenyans across the country with the principal secretary in charge of energy engineer Joseph Njoroge saying over the last two years of the Jubilee administration the number of Kenyans connected to the grid has more than doubled to 3 million with the plan to grow that number to 6 million in the next three years. The president was later in the day to Tuma Chako's hospital where he was to see for himself its equipping with state-of-the-art equipment through a lease financing agreement the Council of Governors has opposed. He was then to conclude his visit with a public rally at the Machakos Stadium. Four women arrested as they tried to cross into Somalia on suspicion of joining the terror group were denied bond by Mombasa court. Senior Principal Magistrate Richard Ordeño said that the accused persons could jump bail considering the gravity of the offence they are facing. Khadija Abdul Kadir, Miriam Abud, Um Kair Abdullah and Halima Ali denied being members of Al-Shabaab. The four were charged on May 6 with being members of the militia group following 30 days of investigations. And in other news, First Lady Margaret Kenyatta on Wednesday launched the 20th Beyond Zero Mobile Clinic in Meru County. She did so after the National AIDS Control Council commended the Beyond Zero campaign for its contribution to the war against HIV and AIDS. NACC board members led by the outgoing chairperson Professor Mary Getui said the Beyond Zero campaign has helped in creating awareness about HIV and AIDS and mobilized community to combat the scourge. And on the international scene, let's get the latest on the heat wave sweeping India. More than 1,100 people have died in a major heat wave sweeping India. Southern India has borne the brunt of the hot, dry conditions, and many of the victims are construction workers, elderly or homeless people unable to heed official advice to stay indoors. Roads have melted in New Delhi, where forecasters say they expect the high temperatures to continue into next week, adding to the misery of thousands living on the capital streets with little shelter from the hot sun. Residents of Gugaon, a high-rise satellite city that is home to many of the city's workers, have suffered power cuts of up to 10 hours a day as the electricity grid struggles to cope with the demand from millions of air conditioners. The monsoon is forecast to hit the southern state of Kerala towards the end of this month before sweeping across the country. But it will be weeks before the rains reach the arid plains. I'm Oli Barros for TV. And in business, Steamer Sako has introduced a product called Empower that will see its members access an array of financial solutions through their mobile phones. 5,000 members were registered in the pilot phase and used the channel to apply and receive loans worth 30 million shillings in a period of less than two months, the CEO Paul Wambua says. He says the SACO is now set to acquire a co-banking ICT infrastructure. The other thing, of course, is to enable our members to access services cost-effectively, conveniently, uh, without going to the SACO offices to fill forms, particularly for the short-term facilities, salary advances, emergency loans, and again, the objective here is to enable our members to reduce the cost of transacting the circle. And finally in sports, Swiss police on Wednesday raided a Zurich hotel to detain six top football officials as part of a U.S. investigation into tons of millions of dollars of bribes. All six could be extradicted to the United States, and the shock arrest comes only two days after FIFA president Sepp Blatter seeks re-election as head of football's world governing body in a campaign overshadowed by a scandal. Jeffrey Webb, a vice president of FIFA, was among those detained, according to New York Times. Swiss police in plain clothes took the room keys from the reception at the Brau Lac Hotel and went to the room of the six, the New York Times added. The Swiss Justice Ministry representatives of sports media and sports marketing companies were alleged to be implicated in payments to top football organization officials, including delegates of FIFA and people linked to the world body. It is said the bribes were paid in exchange of media rights and marketing rights to competitions in the United States and South America. And that was your Capital Online TV news. For these and more stories, remember to log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash TV. I've been your host, Margaret Wahito.